we will get into some hot corner topics right off the jump here. And finally, can get into Eric Kratz's former teammate, one of the best closers in the game, Josh Hader, who refused to pitch in the game last night. No, it's slander. That's total bullshit. But paint the picture here. It's Giants-Padres. It's another one-run loss for San Diego. We are in the bottom of the eighth inning. One nothing. San Francisco game. down one nothing, yep. and Robert Suarez on the mound, who they paid a lot of money for to be a high leverage pitcher for them, and has done really well recently. Started out the season boot nuggets. Yep, came back from the IL, and it was second and third. Michael Conforto up. They wanted the left on left match. And when I say they, fans. This was an did fans pop. want that? Fans wanted the left on left. Media, want, whoever was writing this narrative, yeah, and I'm just been listening to you and like this, this irritates me because this guy, I know Josh Hader and I know what a competitor he is. And for people to bring up the narrative on what is it? Six games left. I, that this guy doesn't want to pitch if it's a playoff race and they misconstrued his comments and saying, you know, this is, this is, like a narrative that you can't just write about somebody who you've watched compete the entire season, an all-star again, Rolaids Reef relief winner or whatever the award is now, Trevor Hoffman award winner. Like this guy is a competitor and to question whether he would have come out because then he said, oh yeah, well, are we in a playoff race? No, the Padres are not in a playoff race. Don't misconstrue his, his words and say, that he's not competitive and all this stuff. This is, this is trash. And I think it should be, it should be brought up. And this narrative sucks that, that they're trying to slightly push this. I kind of disagree with you on this one, Kratzy, okay. because Josh Hader's the guy who came out and said he didn't want to pitch for four outs. He said it after his when? arbitration, when? after his arbitration, he okay. went into arbitration and said, I don't want four outs. I'm only pitching three out saves. That's it. You can't say he didn't say it because the Brewers and him said it together. Josh Hader is only pitching for three outs. Remember last year in the in the NLCS, Robert Suarez versus Bryce Harper. Josh Hader was nowhere to be found. That was what eighth inning, right? Two outs. Josh Hader was not. They were in the playoffs then. He only pitches three out saves. In the last three years, he's pitched three times more than three outs, and that was one of them was in the NLDS last year against the Dodgers. Other than that. He hasn't done it. So for for people to say, oh, Josh, why didn't you pitch it? This is Josh's own words they're using against him. He only wants the three outs, and that's fine. If you're a three-out guy, you're at Mariano Rivera. Mostly was a three-out guy, right? These guys are three-out guys. Fine, perfect. They're not as effective the second inning. Whatever you want to say, but these are Josh Hader's words. And listen, Bob Melvin knows it. Bob Melvin has had these conversations with Josh Hader, and Josh Hader has told him, listen, Bob, I'm really a three-out guy. That kind of ties your manager's hands. That's fine. The Padres knew what they were getting when they traded for him. Josh Hader said it. The Brewers knew it. So, I mean, the, the, the hate he's getting is not justified because this is what they knew what they were getting. But the problem I have is the reporters asking the question that they already knew the answer to. That he was a, They just wanted to hear him say it because they just wanted to have more excuses as to why the Padres are going to let him walk and he's going to sign a giant contract somewhere else. Exactly. Like they knew, they knew he had said this before, but that's not who this guy is. The reason he said that before with the Brewers was because of what happened in arbitration. He got dinged because it was a, it was, I'm not going to get into it any farther than that, but he essentially got dinged in his arbitration because, oh, well, you know, he doesn't have as many appearances because he's coming out and throwing. He was doing two inning saves, which in arbitration doesn't pay you as much as having two one-inning saves. So there's there's a little gamesmanship there from the sense of like health-wise and your longevity of your career. But in this situation with the Padres out of the playoffs, I'll repeat it, they've been out of the playoffs and asking him to pitch four outs when he hasn't done it. You said it yourself. He hasn't done it, but three times in the last, what'd you say, three years? Something like and the that, one yeah. time, two or three years, yeah. And the one time was in the playoffs. And last year, when Suarez had to face Harper, Bob Melvin said he didn't want to go to him. Now, you can say it was Hader that didn't want 
they're not they're not calling down there and Josh Hader, and I'm only saying this because I know him as a person, and they're saying, Hader, can you get us four innings? And he goes, Bob, I'm not your guy. I'm not your guy. Like, go go to somebody else. That is not at all what it is. You're talking about setting up a game plan for your bullpen, especially this is what teams are doing right now that are going to be in the playoffs. Padres are not in the playoffs. They're setting up their bullpen, and they know how many innings they can get and how to script each game throughout different parts of the lineup. Okay, so then part of this then has to fall on Bob Melvin because Bob Melvin has to go to his player. And if you're saying, I, listen, I probably agree. I don't know Josh Hader like you do. I never played with Josh Hader. But if, if I'm on his team and I'm Bob Melvin, I'm going to the team and saying, listen, I know it's a long shot, but if we win every game, maybe we everyone, someone collapses and we get in. So we play in every game like it's the seventh game of the World Series. So, Josh, if I need you to go four outs, can you do it? So Bob Melvin maybe needs to ask the question. If you're saying Josh Hader won't say no, then maybe you go to him and say, hey, look, Josh, this is a one-time thing. I need you maybe to get four or five outs in this game. Can you do it? Then he knows. But So then that's Bob Melvin's fault. But, again, for me, this goes back to Josh Hader saying it. Listen, I understand he was doing two-inning saves, three-inning saves, and it wasn't sustainable. And I get that, and he got dinged in arbitration. And then he became a big deal, and that's one of the reasons why the Brewers famously traded him out of nowhere last year was because – They were like, we can't only use this guy, and it doesn't set up properly for the way Craig Council wants to use him. And I get it, money, and and everything that plays into it. But, again, some of this has to fall not only on Hader for saying it, but then Bob Melvin for not going to him and saying, hey, Josh, we might need you for four outs, buddy. Can you do it? And I'm sure, like, if he's what you say he is, Kratz, and I have no reason not to believe you, he would have done it. They might have got the win, and they might still be alive in the playoffs. Now, they're already out of it. That's not the point. But if you're you're playing – you have to still believe, no matter even if you're completely dead and out of it, until that magic number is zero, you, you have to believe you have a chance. Or why play? So then, so then, why did you ding Fernando Tatis for robbing that home run? He robbed that home run. He thought that was the robbing home run that was going to push their team into the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot. There's a lot of maybes. And my comments are more as a person, and I know what kind of competitor he is, and ultimately. They're not in the playoffs. No, they're not not in the playoffs. And I don't think you disagree with me on that. But you're talking about internal conversations. I would have a hard time believing that Bob and Hader have not had those conversations because of the because of how good of a good of a communicator Bob Melvin is and how good of a and how much of a competitor Hader is. Did you see Bob Melvin's interview after the game? No, I didn't. I didn't they, see they, he's, they, They're talking to him. He's in his chair, and he's like – and they ask the hater question. He's like, we had conversations about this, and it wasn't something that we can do. And he's, like, looking up. And you could tell it, like, totally made – Bob Melvin's like, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, we couldn't do that because of the conversations we've had. And, yeah, just not something that we can do here. And then someone else asked, and he's like, yeah, just – we've had the conversation. And it was just, like, completely awkward, and he couldn't get out of the situation fast enough. So, yeah, I'm sure those conversations were had, and we don't know them. But, I mean, listen, they're out of it. And as far as the Tatis thing goes, listen, I have no problem with Fernando Tatis dancing and doing his thing after he robs a home run. He's played an incredible right field. Do do what you got to do to have fun. Wait, why did you say Tatis? What happened? Why did Tatis jump in here? No, because yesterday he said said Tatis shouldn't be jumping around because it wasn't, you know, they've lost however many games, all that stuff. And I was just like, you know. So playing both of the both sides of it in the sense that like Tatis because they've been losing because you said it yesterday you're like oh well because they're losing should he just catch it and go hmm. yeah I mean uh, like think about it for that, half the, the teams Tatis in the league thing, right now though hold on the Tatis are, thing is like, completely different because that's just having fun that's not a game management situation not a competitive I that's agree. not okay. a Why we have a chance to win the this game no no I said it I, I brought he it. brought it up uh, I was just, I brought it up. He was just he was talking about it. Oh, I got because it, I got because it. the the difference is the the hater thing is a competitive we're trying to win the game thing. The Tatis thing is him just having fun in the middle of a terrible season. Which great, have all the fun you want. Just realize though you ha- you guys have had a terrible season, and the, you and the, thank God for the Mets or the Padres would be the most disappointing team with the payroll, right? <laughs> but I mean the hater thing is a competitive thing that comes down to either communication from Preller to Melvin to Hater. Or the other way, Hader to Melvin to Preller, pitching coach, whoever it is. But somebody said, hey, I can't give you four outs. And 
listen, from a player standpoint, I get it. You want to protect everything. You're almost at the end for free agency. He's going to get paid. Great. But it just the reporters for asking this the question they already knew the answer to, that's where the problem started. Facts. But they're reporters, and it was a question. Hey, this is a spot where you could come into the game. It, it opens they, up a deeper storyline that you guys are getting into right now. Like, for example, is arbitration bad for baseball? Creates animosity between player and team. No. Yeah, potentially that. creates a situation like this, right? Hey, team said, screw you. I say, screw you back. And I'm going to worry about my career and taking care of myself and contributing three outs. Now, at the same time, if I'm an owner this off season, I'm spending money on Josh. Like he has consistently been able to dominate late in games. And most closers, I would say, have more variance than he does in terms of your results, right? And maybe this has actually set him in a great spot in terms of durability. He is like, you want to talk, know your role? This dude knows his role and knows how to take care of his body to be out there in the ninth inning. Anyone obviously can go through an injury. Obviously, you can talk about James Shields years back and be like, oh, you can eat innings with the best of them and then gets hurt finally. But my point, AJ, if I'm an owner this offseason and I really need a back-end guy, I don't think that I am slighting Josh Hader at all. No. Knowing I that I didn't say he's that. not going to necessarily give me three outs in the regular or three more than three outs in the regular season. But just saying. I think I think what AJ said, I completely agree with. Them bringing this up. Did they bring this up in and we're not in San Diego? Did they bring this up in May when the Padres were struggling and there was a time? I'm sure there was a time they needed a four out save. Sure. Did they bring this up and was it a big deal? But now at the end of the year. And then I guess, you know, Hater Hater shouldn't have said what he said. Like, are we still in the playoffs? Technically, yes, they were. But I, but I appreciate the real talk right there. Yes. It's not real. You're not in the playoffs now. He's just being a realist. And that's, and that's my whole argument with We that, want him to just this. say nothing? Like, I, I think we need to appreciate a dude that's telling it like it is. Well, every team's going to lose seven in a row or something, and they're going to win seven in a Come on. No, they're not. Listen, realistically, they're not alive. And jo- Josh, I think if he could take this back, might change the way he said it. He, he might have said, well, you know, I, I, I haven't done it all year. So now you want me to do it at the end of the year with six games left or something? I, I mean, there's there's a different way for him to have said it. I I, I just – I don't know. It was, just a, it was just a bad question that was only going to – it was – whoever asked the question, the question was only asked to do one thing, and it was to stir it up. And they did a great job of it because we're talking about it. Everyone's talking about it, right? And then they went to Bob Melvin and asked the same question. So then he's got to answer it awkwardly. So it, it just was a bad question by the reporter. And they have a job to do, and that's how they get – we get clicks and we get this and that. But it's just – it just isn't a good question. You got six games, five games left, whatever it is for the Padres, and now you're asking Josh Hader why he won't give you a four-out save. I mean, you should ask this in spring training and said, hey, Josh, if we need you to give you a four-out – give us a – Four out save, will you do it? And he would have given you a different answer, right? But to ask this with less than a week in the season, it was just a bad question. But they they might have asked him that, and they just brought it up again in this spot. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad yeah. question, AJ. I'm I'm going to defend my media. Piece. Yeah, but okay. So, but here's the thing: how the Padres have gotten to a point, and the Padres haven't gotten to this point because their Josh Hader's been bad. Correct. <laughs> it's been a it's been a lot of other things that have been gone wrong for the Padres this year. And so Suarez has been okay for him, but I just don't think that, you know, Josh Hader not getting his four-out save is the reason they missed the playoffs. But the way the question kind of was presented to him, <laughs> it makes it seem like, well, gosh, we just missed the playoffs because you wouldn't get a four-out save. Well, that's not the case. There was, a, you know, we can, we can come up with 50 reasons before we get to Josh <laughs> Hader on why the Padres aren't in the postseason. But that's my point. I just think that the – here's my take. The way this played out was perfect. A reporter asked a question. That's their right. I don't think it is like so blatantly out of left field or personal or anything else. It's a spot where maybe another closer would potentially be used. Josh Hader's also like, let's be real for a moment. This is not the time to ask that. We are not in a playoff race right now. He essentially said that. And I would go like, bravo. Nice answer. And we move on. You know? So I I thought it was cool. I thought it was fine. 
And that's why Scott would have asked the question because he's like, man, I just want a real answer. If you told me that, I, hey, got a real that I would ask him. And if he said that, I would be like, cool, respect. You're right. You guys are not in it right now. That makes sense. <laughs> no, as a writer, you don't have an opinion. You just write the facts. We've been told that the whole year. Well, then you clearly haven't been listening to Fair Territory. It's full of takes. <laughs>